what is Lens Protocol? So, um, internet at the beginning was thought of open protocols, right? We had NCMTP, FTP, RSS, uh, HTTP. You know, the internet was built upon these pol uh, open protocols for free, open to everyone. Then in the middle, we had 20 years of opportunistic entrepreneurs that built great applications like um, the ones that we use today, but they were closed applications. So they create this business, which now are very big, uh, on top of these open protocols, but they created uh, closed gardens. And Web3 is about returning to the beginnings of the internet, but with protocols with more features, like the original protocols of uh, Web1, which is the, the internet, were too basic. So they didn't have too much functionality. And with Web3, we are seeing the emergence of great protocols, protocols that now have embedded logic with smart contracts that can, be, that can do whatever we want on top of them. So um, Lens Protocol is targeting social media. Uh, right now, social media has a lot of issues, like uh, everything that happens inside of one of these networks is 100% control by these uh, corporations. They control everything that happens inside of the network. Uh, they don't allow for commerce. They don't allow most for free speech. They can suspend you. They can close your account. You are not the owner of your content. You are not the owner of like your followers. If, you are, if YouTube or Instagram suspend you, you lost everything. Maybe you are an influencer with uh, you know, five years of work building your following, and then you are gone. You don't have nothing. So uh, on top of this, like the business model of social media applications right now is to exploit our information. I mean, every time we grab the phone and we look at the phone, like the act of looking at the phone is monetizable. And they are monetizing our attention without our consent. They don't have public APIs, or if they do, they are too close. We can build like nothing upon them. Or maybe we do, and in three months, they, ch they change the terms of service, and we need to shut down our, our applications, like we see happen with Singa and Facebook, or all the Twitter clients uh, that once were open, then one, one day Twitter decided to stop allowing clients, and all the business were gone. So Web3 is about uh, building on, on top of a protocol like Lens, or let's say Polygon. You can never be like shut down. You know, it's an open protocol. It's centralized. So you can be like, confident that you are building for the long term. Uh, also in social media, we are not seeing innovation. Like for the last 15 years, like, the only thing new is like be real or TikTok, but nothing much else has happened. Uh, I think that we are missing a lot of like an infinite amount of applications that we don't know that they could exist, but they will exist at some point because of Lens Protocol, of course. So. Let's not forget that social media today generates uh, $150 billion per year from us, like monetizing our attention, our eyes looking at the screens, our actions. Uh, for me, this is my personal opinion, but for example, an application, a social media application is like really easy to build today. We have so many talented developers and Building a clone of these applications may take like two months, three months maybe, with talented hackers. So in this era, I think like these applications are a commodity. So most of this value should be for us because we are the networks. The applications, they are just a commodity. So we are presenting Lens Protocol, which is um, like the base layer where to build the new social media applications upon. Like the, we can think about the, the new Twitter or the new Instagram or whatever. Probably they, they are not going to be like that. They are going to be totally different. We don't know exactly how it's going to work. Um, Web2 social media apps have built great network effects. They have billions of users, so we are not trying to compete there. But um, we think that new primitives will emerge that we have seen already with our verticals in the web free space. Um, so how it works is basically this. We have abstracted like basic 
social media features, like you have your profile, you have followers, you have likes, comments, like uh, mirrors, which is kind of a retweet. So we have embedded all of this functionality into a protocol that is available to everyone to build upon. Um, so this is what I was saying earlier, like this is a commodity, you know, posting, commenting, sharing. This is all embedded into the protocol. You don't have to build it by yourself. Uh, of course, we leverage NFTs. You create your profile NFT. This NFT is your identity, your profile. If you get, for example, if you're, work, um, let's say, an application built on top of Lens, you don't like it anymore, and you have 100,000 followers, you can move to another application who is also using Lens, and your followers will be there. No sign-ups needed. You have your following, as already, in every application on top of Lens. The same with your content. The, the content is not stored in centralized servers. This is not property of some corporation. Your content is yours. It's, probably, it's going to be probably on Polygon, and you can move it from application to application without needing to do like migration or export, import, nothing like that. So uh, on top of these functionalities, we have models. These models create new kind of logics, like for example, you can mint NFTs from a post. So you, 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 you do a post and you allow this post to be collected. And this collection means that every time a people collect it, so collect it is like a new thing, you know, you can collect my post and a new NFT will be minted. This NFT can be minted with any kind of logic. For example, I'm an artist and this is my post, my, my image, my photo, and I want you to, to collect it for five matics. So now I'm monetizing directly, me being the creator, to the consumer. So I can do that in web social and web two social media apps. I can monetize directly because this app takes 100% uh, of the, the profits. Sometimes they give up until like YouTube gives 50%. That's the most that we can have in social media apps. But most of them do, uh, don't allow for free commerce. So I can sell to you my NFTs directly and I, I take as a creator 99.9% .9 of that. Also the applications take a cut from this monetize, uh, monetization, and of course, the protocol, and of course, Polygon. But everything is small fees, you know? It's like credit cards, small fees. We are not taking 100% of the content you generate. So you can post, this post can be collected. You can have, uh, we have also follow models, so you can follow me, for example, a subscription is possible. Uh, you can subscribe to my premium content for two dollars per, uh, two matics per month, or dollars, or any coin that is going to be available. Um, we can also create, for example, you can only follow me if you are friends with him, or you can only follow me if you have, uh, if you're a fan of mine, or you have purchased my music NFT from my first album or the first release. You know, we can create an infinite amount of logic embedded into these follows and this, uh, well, collects, which is the act of referring. If you refer me, you get a commission maybe on, or some kind of royalty uh, of the profit this reference generates. So uh, really anything can be built. Right now the models, uh, it's like, uh, we only have five of them, but we are going to allow to everyone to build models upon Lens. We are only three months old. Um, after this, I will help you creating your you can claim a profile, a handle, dot lens. For example, mine is fabric.lens. But right now, we are still in beta, and we are st it's a private beta. So in terms of the architect architecture, so you can think of this as, instead of software as a service, like social as a service. So we, um, we are pushing hard on having great front ends, because the protocol is great. Uh, but we need, we are talking about social media, so we need great social media apps built upon Lens. And great social media apps is not only hacking, it's design, it's UX, it's thinking on the end user. Uh, mo as you know, most of the social media applications came out from universities, right? So uh, no pressure, but it would be great if you can think of 
a new kind of social application that has unique web-free features, but is also appealing for the young. And when it, when, when it appeals from the young, then it appeals to everyone. Everything starts here always, especially in social. Um, we have an API, which is like a new, it's like a new thing in Web3, having a traditional Web2 JavaScript API that you can query, that you can post, uh, you can create mutations. We use GraphQL, we have an SDK. Uh, it's really super easy to use. You don't have to be thinking in smart contracts, you don't have to be thinking in scalability or solidity. You just create this awesome front end with React or Vue or whatever, and we, can, we operate as a backend, where you, do, through an API, you can use our database, you, can, you have our scalability, you have our, our, our authentication. Uh, it's really very easy. If you get your hands on, you will see by yourself. Um, gasless transactions is also something where, that we are pioneering because uh, you know everything in blockchain is uh, requires gas. So we can be asking everyone if they use like a social media app. Every like you have to pay gas. Every comment you have to pay. So that's not great UX. So we are trying to build infrastructure for not having to do that and that to be on the back end. So you can interact with social media applications. And right now we are subsidizing every gas transactions on Polygon. So um, you don't have to go through this. And in the future, people will have like, um, like a balance. For example, you will have to fund your wallet with 10 matics, and maybe these 10 matics will serve you six months of social media application interaction with no problem. But right now it's totally free, and there is also gasless transactions, so you don't have MetaMask popping up on everything you do. Uh, well, scalability, we, use, uh, we have our own scalability that you can leverage, so building on us, you, we don't have rate limits for the API, so uh, it, would be, it would be great to have a problem about scalability, but right now it's not a concern. And everything is GraphQL powered, so it's very easy to understand and to use. Um, you can picture the space as this right now. So the experience layer is the front ends that um, maybe is a priority for a protocol like ours, social media applications. These front ends, of course, it would be great to be mobile. We are pushing hard on mobile uh, because everything web free right now is, is web. So they are great, but you know, the masses are in mobile. So how do we get to mobile with gasless transactions and great front ends, uh, mobile front ends? Uh, we have the middle layer, where is our API. In the future, the API is going to be decentralized. You can build upon Lens protocol and you will know that you won't get shut down. You can create your own business models. We are permissionless, so you can do whatever you like on a protocol like ours or in a blockchain like Polygon and you have the confidence that for the long term, you're going to be able to grow and to scale your business or your application or idea or whatever. Uh, of course, we have the smart contract layer. We have many smart contracts built by our engineers, which manage all the logic. Uh, you can co interact with them if you like. If you're a solidity dev, you can go straight to the contacts. That's no issue. But if you prefer the API, there is the API too. And um, of course, we are built on, on top of Polygon. So uh, we're still early, but our ecosystem is growing by the day. We already have, between hackathons and applications, we have almost 200 uh, apps built on Lens. Many of them have many thousands of active users per month. We have, this one is called Lenster, like, it's like a Twitter, but it's in web free, so you can create these models and you can monetize your content. Uh, artists are collecting uh, via post. They are allowing their creations to be sold. And they are generating, you know, decent money, but some, and this, it's all going for them, so it's great. Um, so the Lensverse is about creating, you know, the next social applications. I'm thinking about these categories right now. Uh, we have a doc, maybe I have shared it barely with you. 
So we are thinking about trying to guide people like you to see what can be built. But uh, we, really, we, we really don't know it ourselves. So the lens first is you know, for everyone. It's an open protocol. We are just building the protocol, but the ecosystem is going to be built by people like you. So it's like a collaborative effort. Um, we don't own this. Uh, eventually, it's going to be totally decentralized, um, more long term, but that is the goal of Web3. So for example, thinking about analytics. Now, the content is uh, spread across all Lens protocols, so it's not app specific. So for example, this application that is Lenster, only the posts are referred, only the Lenster posts are referred to Lenster, but you can have uh, analytics of the whole protocol, the whole social space, every content that's coming from every application. You can think of agnostic content, which is something new. Um, well, monetization, new ways of creators interacting with their fans to get 99% of what they create through NFT collects, through follows. Uh, there is an infinite amount of things that can be think in terms of monetization and how to, you know, be, being smart about monetization is key at this stage for creating network effects that can grow the lens first more quickly. Um, think about DAOs. I don't know, you are new to Web3, but DAOs are this new kind of way to organize communities around tokens. So for example, you could have um, voting through lens. If you follow me from like before a, a year ago, you can vote and you can have a decision on this DAO or whatever. We are also thinking uh, in terms of curation. So, um, for example, Facebook has 15,000 uh, ma uh, people manually curating each post that is posted on their social media apps every day on top of uh, machine learning algorithms that we don't know nothing about. So, for example, we are building infrastructure to the content to be moderated in a decentralized way. So nobody has a say. Uh, it's going to be like democratized. What gets on lens, what is like uh, hide it or is banned, is not going to be on us. It's going to be on people building moderation infrastructure on top of lens. And well, identity is a big one too. For example, if my profile is an NFT, if, it, if it's an NFT, I can sell it. So if I, my identity, I build an, an ID, digital identity. I have 100,000 followers. Maybe now my profile is worth something. I can, for example, ask for a loan against uh, putting my, my profile as a collateral. If I have 1 million followers, probably it's going to be worth a lot. I can rent it to you. I can transfer it to you. So. Transferable and portable identity uh, could be really interesting to think about. Okay, so how to start with Lens? You can go to our website. We have great documentations. It's updated very regularly by our engineers. We just uh, built this developer quick start. Uh, it's also in the docs. You can, it, we are using Next.js, so you can have an example of how to build the front end using the API. Also, I would recommend the repo API examples, which is a great way to interact with Lens um, with, through command line and using our testnet. And also, I don't know if, if you know Nader, but he's just joined us, and he's like a developer superstar. So we are happy with that, very happy. Uh, and yeah, so that was Lens protocol. And I hope that you build great applications on top of it. Thank you.